That's that's a question you always get, and you can never answer uh, specifically how much do genes mean for who we are. It depends on it depends on what uh, exactly you're talking about. Uh, but one thing I find really interesting and that surprises a lot of people is in behavior genetics, you have the first law of behavior genetics that says every human behavioral trait is genetic, meaning that it's partly genetic. I mean, there is genes in everything we do and everything we uh, think. Like, you know, even your, if you're religious or not, uh, if you're conservative or liberal, there is something heritable about it. Genetics play a part because genes, of course, are, you know, uh, genes are the factors that, you know, uh, tune the little wheels in our brain. It, uh, genes will tune your central nervous system and have a great influence on, you know, how you perceive the world. Well, the, the genome test I had uh, said something about uh, my personal disease risk for about 50, 55 diseases or so. And it is a strange feeling of, you know, it's, it, at the same time, it, it's very interesting and it's a little bit scary <laughs> in a way. I mean, when you sit there uh, at your computer, because this is a, um, you know, a consumer genetic test, it's something you get over the web. You just send away a little uh, spit and you get your genetic results over the web. You sit there in front of your computer and you know you can now get some answers to, you know, what is my dis risk of heart disease or breast cancer, whatever it is. And you start to remember your family history. So who actually died of what? Who had which diseases? So you know that there will be sort of red flags in your genome and you sit there and you click on each disease to, you know, to see what is my risk. And there were some, you know, risks that were, you know, uh, double the risk of, of, you know, the general population, for example, lung cancer um, and some other things. And there were risks that were, you know, smaller. So it's, um, it's a really, really interesting way to get into your own biology in a way and to think about your, um, your family history, in a way. I think that knowing more about not only genomics, but knowing more about human biology, uh, of course makes us see humans differently. We simply understand ourselves and other people better. Uh, and that's why I think that the key to, you know, changing things, uh, is really to look into our biology and see what are the parameters here? What are we working with? Um, what are our basics? And, and, and work with our biology to figure out, you know, how do we change the world, in fact? How do we change ourselves? I think a big part of knowing about, say, your brain physiology and your genetic background and so on, a big part of that is the more you know about yourself, the more you can you know, change yourself, or even, you know, the, you can accept yourself better in a way. It feels like it must be coming towards a tipping point. We must begin to know so much that we can, you know, in a way, it, it all comes down to change, doesn't it? I mean, there is, I think, this drive in human nature to do the best you can, change the world around you, uh, that's why we've come so far in, you know, a hundred thousand years. I think the way we're doing science is changing. It's about um, new possibilities uh, and a new generation of scientists. Uh, what you see is actually when you talk to young scientists who are into exactly, you know, open source and uh, crowdfunding of science, which is completely new, uh, and much more collaborative science. What they're saying is that the way we see science is that it's actually pretty closed. You know, people are sitting there with their ideas, like hens on their eggs, like they're mine, they're mine. Uh, and, and, and there is a new generation that wants to, you know, spread things, collaborate much more. So I think we're seeing a movement and within a generation or two, I think science will be much more collaborative. 
one innovation I would wish for. Something really, really out there, I think, would be could you in some way, by some strange mechanism, get into another human being's mind? Could you actually, you know, develop technology that could allow you to feel what it's like to be another person? I think that would change a lot.